Do you want more great content from me? Check out the description box down below. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. Uh, one second, I'm just going to adjust my camera because I think that it's a little bit too... Is that better or is that better? Uh, I think that's better. But anyway, I mean, you don't want to see my face like this, do you? I mean... That's I mean I, that's just a little bit too much, so I think we'll just go back and then and then I think the other way. Yeah, I'm just too far away, so I, I think the other one was pretty bang on. Anyway, so uh, let's get on with this. So in today's video, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, re research with you guys. Uh, I'm just gonna go down the rabbit hole. What I mean by that is um, I've typed in an initial search for an item that I would like to share with you, and you know hopefully if you don't know about uh, the fact that these items have money, you know, there's money in them, uh, then at least you'll learn something in that respect. But then I'm going to go down the rabbit hole and I'm going to click one of these little related tabs up here. And we're just going to see what comes up and see what has money in it. And uh, obviously that might help you when you're out at the car boots in the charity shops uh, to actually identify some of these items and maybe pick them up. Maybe if you hadn't watched this video, you might not have picked them up because you didn't know there was money in them. Um, but as you can see, these are uh, bustle spinners, yo-yos, 80s, 90s yo-yos. Don't know why these were given out. Well, I say given out, sorry. I don't know why, uh, how these uh, kind of came about. That's what I me uh, meant. I don't know whether they were promo items. Uh, I don't know whether, you know, obviously, I don't know whether there was some form of advertising. Well, they are obviously some form of advertising, but I don't quite know whether they were sold as single items. As I say, whether they were promo item or given out as a freebie i'm not sure maybe if some of the people watching this if you had them at the time you could maybe illuminate me on that but um certainly they are now worth money they are now classed as vintage because they are o over 20 years old and people seem to love them i think it's a nostalgia thing from people who are a little bit older now you know their, their childhood kind of childhood calls to them in these items they want to buy them because uh, it makes them think of their childhood and all those good uh, sort of glory days as a lot of people call them. So, yeah, um, basically the Coke ones seem to be the best bet. Um, I know that the Sprite ones can do okay as well. Um, Fanta ones, there is a Fanta one. Oh, yeah, they seem to actually, yeah, the Fanta one might be better than the Sprite one actually. Um, but certainly the Coke ones are where it's at really with pricing. Uh, you can see a lot of these have gone for slightly less money than maybe they used to be worth. I remember these used to be worth 20, 20, 20 to 25 pound. Um, but this, you know, there's still some good money, and that one's gone for 20. Um, I think I sold mine for 25 quite a while ago. Um, and obviously, my markets have become a little bit saturated. The uh, obviously the pricing's come down on them a little bit. But I think if you held out, you could still get a solid £20 for one of these yo-yos, whether it be the Coke one, the Sprite one, the Fanta one. I think any of them, if you held out, you could probably get a solid £20. You can see that this one here went for 24, oh, 25 quid, but it accepted an offer. So that probably went for about 20 quid, And that went that sold two days ago. So it, it's, it's realistic to think on these kind of yo-yos, you can get that £20 mark. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen these... You're probably not going to come across them that often, but, you know, I would say that they're, they're not rare, but they are uncommon. You know, the items that would fall in the uncommon category. However, you could probably find these maybe once a season at the car boot, something like that. So, once every car boot season, you might come across one of these. Um, and yeah, if you do, then be sure to pick them up if for a quid or two. Well, even if for four or five quid, you know, there's still a margin it, but generally people at car boots are probably only going to ask one or two pounds for them. So, yeah, just wanted to illuminate you on this. I did actually click into this um, listing here before because this one's pretty cool. This one is a box. I don't know whether it's uh, brand new and sealed. Oh. I don't know whether it's brand new and sealed, but it is a boxed one. Um, again, this is like a professional. Um, these are all, it all, all says uh, professional on these. Like for most of the ones uh, I've seen on completed, and for the one I actually had myself and I actually sold, it does say professional on it. So I don't know whether these are, um, you know, may, maybe better quality, uh, more well made, and they're more for 
um, professional yo-yo spinners or whatever, but at the time they were obviously just um, just a yo-yo for children. Um, but obviously they might be better quality or something like that, or made better quality at the time. Um, but yeah, 69.99 plus postage for this. So obviously you're getting boxed like that. I don't, as I say, I don't know whether that's actually completely brand new, but I would imagine it probably is. Um, so yeah, quite quite cool that is, and uh, 69.99 for that sale. So. Someone got a uh, good chunk of change for that sale there. So now what we're going to do is just randomly go for one of these related options that are up here. So I'm thinking I'll go for, obviously a lot of these are yo-yos. So I'm thinking I'll go for this, this Britvic glasses. Because I didn't really think these were worth anything. So, you know, let's see if they are worth something or not. Um, seems like these ones down here, but someone's got them on for not a lot of money. But let's ch check solds. Um... So we'll go down a little bit. So we can see here, pair of vintage Britvic juice stem fruit gla uh, flute glasses even. Uh, uh, someone's got a tenner plus post there, so a nice sort of bread and butter item. Um, you can see, obviously, these have got tomatoes on. The other ones had oranges on. Um, uh, yeah, they're quite nice, actually. I quite like them. They're quite uh, cool-looking little items there. And um, you can see, you know, we, someone got uh, £10 plus post, so pretty decent bread and butter item there, you know, pick them up for 50p each or something like that, and uh, got some nice little bit of money in there, I mean, some people do get a little bit, um, I suppose, anxious about packing up glass, um, but I'm I'm okay with it, once you've done it up for a while, it gets easier, uh, you can trust me on that, because it did, you know, for me, it got easier packing them up, just basically wrap them in plenty of bubble wrap, um, you know, newspaper if you want, things like that. Void fill out the boxes quite a lot, and you'll be all right. So we've got these amber brick bit glasses down here. Um, not glasses, jugs even. Um, Ten quid plus post, so they're pretty cool. I've seen them before actually. Not uh, not out and about, but I mean, I've, well, maybe probably probably out and about actually, because I'm thinking where have I, where else have I actually seen them? But yeah, um, I've seen them before somewhere. I can't remember, but. Yeah, 10 quid plus post, so again, if a 50p each, maybe even a quid each, uh, pick them up, nice little bread and butter item there. Um, but yeah, majority of the other stuff seem to be quite low value, 52 soda siphons there, oh, that's pretty cool, 52 of them for 100 quid, that, someone's got a pretty good bargain there, 52 for 110 quid, because you could probably sell them for a tenner a pop, or just over, so maybe even 15 a pound a pop for... Uh, the better ones, so yeah, that's pretty alright, that, um, someone obviously grabbed a bargain there, um, so yeah, that's about it for them, so let's go down the rabbit hole once more, and let's see what's on, uh, ooh, snowball, snowball glasses we've got here, we've got Scott McKenzie signature, Schweppes glasses, retro glasses, pool twin to tone, I'm, I'm getting excited about that, because I like pool, um, Right, let's go with snowball glasses, because that sounds cool, so let's go with it. So these are snowball glasses we are researching now. Sold listings. Well, doesn't look like there's much going on here. Um, I wouldn't be selling these, because these are pretty low value. Uh, this uh, small cost of Squid Swedish art glass, this is something slightly different. The these seem to be slightly different here. But what I'm looking at is this actual, these actual snowball glasses. And these glasses don't seem to command much money, as you can see. So, something I probably wouldn't be selling, uh, unless I got like a big bundle of them. I maybe could do eight or something. Well, actually, same that there's six there, gone for five quid plus post. So, not a lot of money in them. But if you want to sell them, and maybe, you know, you've not got much in them at all, or you've got given them free, then you might make a little bit of money on them. Uh, so, what am I doing? I'm... I'm nearly searching something different. So let's go for something different now. Isle of Man Pottery Dish. Let's have a look at this. Because this is really fun, just like going through, having a laugh, seeing what's worth what. Um, Ken, Kenneth A. Scott, Scott, Scotcher, uh, Isle of Wight Studio Pottery uh, Seahorse Pin Dish, six quid on auction as well. So you could probably get a tenner plus post for something like that. That's pretty cool. Let's just quickly go into it. I know that this is not particularly on the uh, for the search results. This was actually extra listings, um, but well, I call it extra listings anyway. But you know what I mean. Um, 
so I'll just put get the mark up there so you can see the mark. I oh, won't let me zoom there. Uh, hand pottery, um, Totland, I think it's Totland, is it? Totland Bay. So that's pretty cool, a little pin dish there. So it might be worth looking out for maybe slightly bigger pieces of that. And uh, you might get a little bit more. But even something like that, you probably get buy it now, you know, because this is auction. Buy it now, you probably get a tenner plus post. So quite cool. Um, but yeah, let's just go down here a little bit. Isle of Wight Yarmouth Pottery Seahorse Dish, uh, 1996, the 11 quid on bids. Wow, pretty cool. I'm, I'm focusing on it, in on the Isle of Man stuff because that's obviously uh, what I searched then, so I'm going to ignore this kind of stuff for now. Uh, well, that is actually Isle of Man, but I'm focusing in on the actual dishes and stuff. So you see Joe Lester, Les, Les, yeah, Les, Lester. Um, Isle of Wight Studio Pottery Hedgehog, Hedgehog Pin Dish. So these pin dishes from the Isle of Wight, uh, you know, these Studio Pottery ones seem to do about a ten a week. So that's pretty cool. So you just need to, you know, with a piece of pottery like that, you just need to look on the back. You know, it'll probably say Isle of Wight somewhere. It'll probably say the uh, potter's name or the maker's mark. And uh, then you'll know that, you know, if you get that for a quid or something, you should do all right. I'm not saying that all of them will go for that, but it seems like... Um, a good guess that they are going to be most of them are going to be around a tenner uh, if you kind of half know what you're looking out for and you can kind of uh, identify a piece of studio pottery from something that's a little bit more mass produced um, so there's no more related now except this Isle of Man pottery so I'm going to go on that and then, then what I'm going to do is because we've already looked at Isle, Isle of Man pottery I'm going to go on one of these so Right then, Jersey Pottery, Arch Archibald Knox, right, let's go on this. I, th I thought that was a person, maybe it is a person, but, uh, right, so, you see all of these on Buy It Now, it looks like pewter, something like that, um, pretty cool. So, from, from yo-yos to, basically, some sort of antique pewter and stuff, so, Archibald Knox, Tudorick, oh, Tudorick, uh, Tudorick even, they're a good name in pewter, actually, so... Yeah, Tudwick, uh, Pewter, Fruit Bowl there, gone for 100 quid, obviously an offer has been accepted. Antique Tudwick, uh, I think that's how you say it, Tudwick. Um, Libert Liberty, English Pewter, Hammered, Whiplash, Vars. That's pretty cool. I'm going to click into that. Archibald Knox. I need to research what this Archibald Knox is. I swear it's a, a person. Uh, maybe it's a designer of some sort. But I thought it was like a celebrity, Archibald Knox. That's nice. That is really nice. I really like that piece. So, you see there. Uh, I'll see if I can't get a little stamp for you. So then you kind of know what you're looking out for. Uh, in two English pewter. Yeah, zero, three, zero. There's no... You. Were, I thought there would have been like a maker's mark somewhere. But I can't see one anywhere. So I don't know. Unless it's like just under that. No, that says made in England, doesn't it? So I don't know, but uh, that is a really nice piece. Obviously, if you see something like that in pewter of that sort of quality, you can tell that there's going to be some money in it, um, opposed to your maybe standard just, you know, pewter teapots and stuff. Although saying that, some pewter teapots, if they're of a the right name like Tudwick, uh, will go for good money anyway, even if they are, do look quite, quite standard. So we're going to go up now, and we're going to go to the next thing. Um... Oh, we've got Liberty & Co. Sil Simwick Silver and Enamel cuff Cufflinks, designed by Archibald Knox. So it seems like, yeah, this guy's a designer. I thought he was some sort of celebrity. Well, I suppose he is a celebrity in that specific sort of field or niche. Um, but I thought he was like, like an actual celebrity or something. Um, but no, it looks like he's a designer of sort of pewter, silver, jewellery, that sort of stuff. I'm not sure. I'd have to do a bit more research into that, but... Pretty cool, they've gone for a lot of money on uh, auction there. Uh, obviously they're silver and enamel, and they look quite well done actually, so yeah. Uh, so we're going to go to, let's go to Art Nouveau WMF, and I'm not going to try and pronounce WMF, I don't even know, I can't even pronounce what it stands for, so yeah. Um, now we're going to go to Solds, as always. Solds! Right, there we go, so WMF Silver Plated Art Nouveau Specimen Butterfly Vars. Or vase, whatever you want to call it. Hmm. Uh, to be honest, I've not really ever looked into WMF that much, so I don't really know whether I like it or not at the moment. Um, 
it looks okay. I don't, I don't particularly love the kind of raised metal work. I mean, I don't mind the butterfly being raised off there, but to me, the other raised bit, it, it, it doesn't make it look tacky in my opinion, but it makes it look a little bit, I just don't particularly like that style, you know, particularly. You know, I don't mind raised style on certain pieces, but, like, as I say, the butterfly there, but the other bits of raised, I don't know, it makes it look a little bit... It makes it look a little bit too much, like a little bit too bold, but I suppose it's whether you like that style or not. Uh, we've got some sort of, uh, uh, like a Art Nouveau kind of... Um, don't know whether that's a naked lady, I'm not sure. Um, but that's pretty cool, like, sort I don't know what, like, sort of a little tray or something. I've had one before. I, um, inaccurately, um, described it as a mermaid. Um, but it, I don't think it is a mermaid. It's just basically a woman, uh, that then her feet are attached to this sort of tray. And it sort of moulds that tray. Um, but it's not a mermaid or anything. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. WMF spelt a figure of a girl. Holding a vegetable or plant. I love some of these descriptions as well because I find it quite hard to describe some of these items. So you end up just kind of literally being very simplistic with your descriptions on listings. And just saying exactly what it is rather than doing too much more research into it. But yeah, that's quite cool. I like that. I like that more than the butterfly one. I think that's really nice actually. Uh, what's that? What's that gone for? So 11 bids, 22 quid. Uh, now, I don't know how you tell that it's WMF, so I'm going to go on to another listing. See if... I want to I want to see if I can show you, like, the mark of WMF, so then you know what you're actually looking out for, you know, the actual mark. Otherwise, it's pointless, really, isn't it, me showing you this, because then you, you wouldn't know how to identify it. Um, ah, right, so let's see... Maybe there isn't marks, I don't know. Maybe some WMF pieces are unmarked, but it's kind of like... So, ah, here we go. WMF EP. So that'll be one of the variations of the marks. I'm assuming that, like with a lot of these antique pieces, you know, these sort of uh, pottery pieces and things like that, metalware pieces, they, one company might not just have one mark. They may have variations of different marks, but... As you can see, that's a WMF stamp there, so pretty cool. EP, so I'm assuming that's electro plate. And then you've got some other marks there. I'm assuming that might be the grade. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know what that OX is, though. Uh, that 1 over 10 might be the sort of grade or the uh, fineness of the actual metal, but I don't know about that o OX, but yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Um... So I think we'll do one more. We'll have a we'll have another go. We'll we'll pick a juicy one this time. Let's have a look. Ooh, what what about this? Solid silver or mouse man? This is I think I think mouse man's gonna be a juicy one, so we've got to have mouse man. Right. Mouse man, mouse I did, I wasn't expecting that. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. As you can see, I don't know anything about mouse man, so uh Oh, there's no sold for that particular thing, or just other other listings or something, uh, or, or referring to different things. I don't know. Anyway, um, but this looks like Mouse Man. This is yeah. This is what I was kind of going. So well, actually, as you can see here, I know these aren't necessarily sold, but they are you know being bid up. So and you see, it's a really nice. I suppose it's a uh, che yeah cheese board. I was going to say. Uh, what do you call it? Not a bread bin. Oh, what do you call it now? It's such a simple word. A, uh, you know, a, a, a thing that you cut bread on. Oh my god, I don't know. I can't, I don't even know. Um, I, someone will tell me in the comments and I'll be like, how was I so stupid at that moment? But, you know when you just forget really, really little words? Um, but this looks really nice. It's got like a carved mouse on the handle there. That's really quite cool. Um... It doesn't look like, you know, I mean, it does look like it's well made, but at the same time, it looks like kind of a mouse looks quite um, rustic, you know, in the carving, but sometimes that's what a lot of people go for, that kind of rustic look. Um, but the actual sort of um, pl the platter there, or the cheese board, looks really, really nice. I really like that, and it's obviously got this design, this kidney design. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, this is worth looking at. But, I mean, I don't think you're ever going to find this. I, know, I think we've gone down the, the rabbit hole a little bit too far now. But um, I don't think you're going to find this at Car Boot. I mean, you might do. I'm not saying you won't, but you you, you know, you might do. But it's uh, it's unlikely, really. Or if you do, it's kind of once every now and then. You know, once every now and then being once every few years. But certainly you could find this um, more so in, you know, fine art sales or general sales at auction. Um, so you can, you know, you can go to your local auction house and you can see browser catalogs. And maybe if ever you find one of these, um, you know, you can do a bit more research yourself as well. But you'll know at least it's worth having a look at. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. I quite like that. I really do like that. Uh, so this is a Robert Thompson Mouseman hand-carved uh, cheese board really really cool so I mean we'll leave it there on mouse man so we've gone from whistle spinners to uh, pottery pin dishes to uh, WMF to Tudrick and then finally to uh, mouse man so um, if you have any requests for uh, new items that you would like me to start off on uh, so on the next video I do if you want me to start off on a specific item uh, and then before heading down the kind of the uh, rabbit hole if you'd like that then please do pop a comment down below of what you would like me to start off on if you enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up I am trying to do uh, videos more that I enjoy doing I'm not like hell-bent on trying to get a load of views or anything like that I want to do videos that I really enjoy doing and uh, obviously if you got a little bit of entertainment out of this maybe you got a little bit of value as well in terms of maybe something that you didn't know already um, then that's what I'm all about so I want to bring some okay content some fairly valuable content but that is also quite entertainment uh, entertaining and just a little bit uh, a little bit of a laugh as well so that's what I want to try and bring to the table because I really enjoy um, doing this sort of format of video so I think that um, I am gonna heavily feature these videos on my channel from now on maybe once or twice a week as well as the normal you know sales updates and haul videos but I really enjoyed doing this video it was a bit of fun maybe you learned something maybe you didn't but yeah anyway it is what it is and I will see you in the next video guys so see you very soon